Good morning, it's Mr. Flint and Ms. Segovia. Today we're going to be looking at freefall calculations and concepts. With freefall, you can see that an object is under the sole influence of gravity. That is, any object that we drop in the air or we throw up in the air and it goes straight back down, we consider that it is only being affected by gravity, it is not being affected by air resistance or any other force, it's only under the influence of, that object's only under the influence of gravity. Now, all objects that are in free fall accelerate at the same rate. That is, they accelerate at 9.8 meters per second every second. So every second that goes by, they're going to get 9.8 meters per second faster. And a lot of times we'll abbreviate those units as 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, sometimes we will round that number to 10 meters per second every second just because it gives us a little bit easier math to deal with and we get a little bit easier rounded numbers to look at. So we say that an object gets 10 meters per second faster every second that goes by. So if one second has gone by, it's going 10 meters per second. After two seconds, it's going 20 meters per second. After three seconds, it's going 30 meters per second, and so on. So we say that the acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. Now, sometimes we'll change that A at this point to a G, which just stands for acceleration due to gravity. And we say G is 10 meters per second squared it is still an acceleration. Notice we don't call it gravity, we call it acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration, this is still an acceleration. That's because later on we're going to see a force and we have to, the force of gravity, we have to differentiate between acceleration of gravity and force of gravity. They are not the same thing. We'll get into forces soon, but not right now. And when we get into forces it will ex that will give us an actual explanation of why all the objects accelerate at the same rate. Why a mouse being dropped accelerates at the same rate as in, like an elephant being dropped. Or if we drop a bowling ball and a golf ball, they'll accelerate at the same rate. Now, of course, we know that air resistance does affect it, but we're not going to get into that right now. We will get into forces and acceleration later. Today, we're just going to assume that all, all, all objects right now accelerate at the same rate because we're not going to be looking at air resistance just yet. All right, so now look at this handout that we've given you. And we're going to look at the directions. It says to make sure to use the scale here and that one centimeter is equal to five centimeters. Let me restate that real quick. One centimeter is equal to five meters on this scale here. So then it says that we need to draw the positions of the drop ball at one second interval. So this little person right here, she's going to be dropping that ball off the cliff and we need to know where it is at one second interval. So where is it at zero seconds? Where is it at one second? Where is it at two seconds? Where is it at three seconds? And so on. We need to make sure to neglect air drag or air resistance. Drag is just another name for air resistance. Assume the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. So we've they're giving us some information. They're saying our acceleration is 10 meters per second squared and we've got to use these different times up here. And then we need to calculate where it is, how, what its displacement is. So listing out our givens and this unknown, we can then come find an equation. Your equation you want to use is going to be displacement is equal to one half a t squared. Now, there are some other things out here to the side, but we can ignore those for right now because we're going to assume that the ball starts at the start so we can get rid of this initial position. And if it starts here in this person's hand, the initial velocity should also be zero because it's not moving when you first drop it. So this simplifies our formula to one half at squared. It's much easier to deal with than the full kinematic formula for displacement. 
So now let's plug in some numbers. We need to know where this ball is at one second intervals. So let's start off with plugging in 10 to our acceleration. We're going to use 10 to start off with, not 9.8. Eventually we'll use 9.8 when we want very specific numbers. And we'll do one second. Because we know at time zero, it's not moving, its um, displacement would be zero there. So at one second, half of 10 is 5. And 1 squared would be 1 still. Okay. So now notice the square is not on the number anymore. It's only on the unit. It doesn't appear outside the parentheses. And that becomes important right here. 5 times 1 is 5. Second square is going to cancel out second squared and leave us with meters as our unit. So at 1 second, this is fall in five meters. And I'm going to drop it, draw it one centimeter. Well, how do I know to do that? Because it says that five meters is equal to one centimeter here. So we're just going to keep a tiny data table out here over to the side. All right. And so at time of one second, well, let's do zero to start off with. At time zero, our displacement was zero meters. Now we know at one second it's at five meters. And we're just going to continue this on. So I'll do the next one down here. All right, so let's do the next time interval. I'm going to draw a line. So here we're starting a new one. One half a t squared. Let's plug in our numbers. We're still going to plug in 10. But notice, as we're doing that, we're always taking half of 10, which is 5. So we're going to be using that number 5 there quite a bit. We're going to plug in 2 seconds into time. All right, so here we've got that half of 10, which is 5. 2 squared is 4. Second square, seconds times seconds gives us second squared. All right, 5 times 4 gives us 20. And then we can cancel out seconds, and that would be 20 meters. And we're going to come draw that right here at 4 centimeters. So at 2 seconds, we are now at 20 meters. And let's also do kind of our scale distances here, just for fun. And that will be a good comparison. 0 centimeters, 1 centimeter, 4 centimeters. All right, now you continue on. Do the next two here and continue on. Um, please pause the video at this time and we will look at the answers in just a second. But I want you to try the next two and see if you can do the calculations on your own and then check your answers. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, and then you're going to come back and check your answers. Okay, so here are the answers. You can see that at three seconds, the object has fallen to. 45 meters and at 4 seconds it's fallen to 80 meters so you can draw those in. Now if we come up here you can look at our data table and there's actually a pattern to these numbers and this pattern is common to all objects that are in free fall. Every single time any object in the universe, well not any object in the universe, but any object we drop on earth is always going to have this pattern. At time zero it's going to be at zero meters. One second, it's going to fall in five meters. Two seconds, 20 meters. Three seconds, 45 meters. Four seconds, 80 meters. Now, in there, you can see that there's a square pattern because of the one half a t squared, time, time being squared. Okay, let me write a little bit better squared there. Okay, so because that time is squared, we're going to see that pattern. We can see it here with the scale, and that's the importance of this scale. Genius of Paul Hewitt here to do this one. Zero squared is zero. One squared is one. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. And four squared is 16. Now, as we take and we multiply those by five, which is the one half of a, one half of 10, which is 5. Okay, so as we multiply that, then as we go 0 times 5, we get 0. 
1 times 5, we get 5. 4 times 5, we get 20. 9 times 5, we get 45. And 16 times 5, we get 80. So there is a pattern inside here that is consistent. Now, go to the back side of your worksheet, and it says a rock is dropped from rest position at the top of a cliff and free falls to the valley below, assuming negligible air resistance. So negligible, negligible meaning no air resistance. Use kinematic equations to determine the distance fallen and the instantaneous speed after each second. Indicate these values on the odometer, that is distance fallen, and you can see the odometer is over here on the right side of the screen. And the speedometer view shown to the right of the cliff. It's sort of like a reading in your car. It's like you're sitting in your car and you're looking at the distance that your car has gone and the speed. Well, we're just putting that odometer on your rock as it's falling. So let's look at zero seconds over here. It has fallen zero meters and its initial velocity, its initial speed there would be zero meters per second. All right, so now let's do it at time one. Well, at time equals one, we already figured out in the first week worksheet that it went five meters. So we just flip back and we can see at one second, this thing has gone to five meters. At two seconds, it's going to have gone to 20 meters. So we can go ahead and just fill those in right here. We've already calculated this part. So we know this is 20 meters. We know this is going to be 45 meters. We know this is going to be 80 meters. Now we haven't calculated the last one, so you're going to have to do that last one. So calculate that last one there. And I will show you that at the end. All right, so now let's do the velocities. It says at one second it's going 10 meters per second. Well, let's look at that. How do we know that? Well, it comes back to this kinematic formula right here. The final velocity is equal to acceleration multiplied by time plus the initial velocity. Well, we know if we drop an object, its initial velocity up here is zero. So that goes away. So we just look at V equals AT. Well, as an object's falling, what's its acceleration? Well, it is 10 meters per second squared. Really 9.8, but we're rounding it to 10 because so it's a little easier. So let's plug in 10 meters per second squared and a time of one second. Okay, so one second, and we get that this is going to be going 20 meters per second. The second only cancels out the square, so it leaves us with meters per second as our unit. So it's going, I said, sorry, I did that wrong, 10 meters per second. Back up, 10 times 1 is 10 meters per second. Sorry about that. So let's draw that in. Oh, it's drawn in for us. It's going 10 meters per second. I jumped ahead of myself here. Now at two seconds, we're going to do something very similar and just go V equals, I'm going to leave off my units now, 10 times 2, which is going to give us 20. Okay, and then at 3 seconds, if it's accelerating at 10 meters per second every second, it should now be going 30 meters per second. Well, hopefully you can start guessing at the next time interval what it's going to be. It should be... 40, and then finally it should go up to 50. Now, do this calculation right here. See if you can use one half, your displacement is equal to one half a t squared to do this. I'll give you just a second. Hit pause right now. See if you can do it. Practice on your own. All right, and you should get 125 meters here. On this one. All right, now, now which of the time of the listed times is the acceleration the greatest? Well, what's the acceleration as this thing's falling? Well, it doesn't change. Your acceleration is 10 meters per second squared the entire time. At which of the listed times is the speed the greatest? Well, it'd be down here at the bottom. Although the acceleration is not changing, the speed of the object is. So is the velocity. They're both increasing and they're getting faster as that thing falls. So that's going to be when it's 50 meters per second. But that's not actually the answer. The answer should be 5 seconds here. Okay, so at 5 seconds, the speed is 50 meters per second. Now, if the falling 
time of a free falling object is doubled, the distance fallen increases by a factor of, identify two times and use the distance fallen value. So we've got to figure out a factor there. All right, and hopefully you figured out it is a factor of four. All right. That's